the church at Antioch. Gradually, the gospel message found hearing ears amongst the Gentiles, but fewer in number. The law training of the Jews had been God's special blessing to them, preparing some of them for the gospel. The first church in which Gentiles seemed to predominate in numbers was at Antioch. Barnabas, Silas, and others were prominent amongst the brethren there, and later St. Paul. It was at Antioch that the followers of Jesus were first called Christians. Many Christians wished that no other name had ever been accepted. The Antioch Church, according to the Bible record, had very simple arrangements, similar to those practiced by Jesus and the Apostles. Forms and ceremonies had not yet entered to crowd out the simplicity of Christ with mere forms of godliness. They met for growth in grace, knowledge, love, and to assist each other in the narrow way. When fairly underway in their study, they partook of the missionary spirit, and authorized and financed a mission which was conducted by St. Paul and Barnabas. Other missions were also conducted, as recorded in the book of Acts. Not long after this, the terrible persecutions of Nero and Diocletian came upon the church. These Roman emperors found diversion and relief from ennui in the horrible tortures they inflicted upon the inoffensive followers of Jesus, whose mission in the world is merely to do good to all men as they have opportunity, especially to the household of faith, and to prepare themselves and each other for association with their Redeemer in the coming kingdom. Why did God permit persecution? The answer is that testings of faith and loyalty to God are as necessary to Jesus' followers as they were to himself, and for the same reason, to develop and crystallize character. These correspond to Jesus' own persecution and crucifixion. Thus he explained, saying, It was necessary that the Son of Man should suffer and enter into his glory. The elect walk in his steps.